expect it today in Tempe, Arizona. We're here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. It's the Dodgers and the Angels meeting for the first time this spring. And it's the Angels opening game of Cactus League play. Hi again, everybody, along with Rick Monday. I'm Tim Neverick. Kirsten Watson's going to join us in just a little bit. So will Tyler Glasnow for the first time wearing a Dodger uniform throwing pitches. And he was devastating to opposition hitters while he was a member of the Tampa Bay Rays. And Rick, it's going to be good to see the local guy now on the mound for the Dodgers. And he's enthusiastic, and the Dodgers are enthusiastic to have it. It's going to be nice, too. He averaged over 96 miles an hour last year. And if you're a hitter, it's okay. I've got to gear up for 96. Oddly enough, he threw a high percentage of breaking pitches. In particular, a devastating slider. It's going to be nice to have the big arm of the six foot eight right hand. Out of Hart High School in Santa Clarita, he said playing for the Dodgers has been a dream of mine since I can remember. I'm beyond excited to start this next chapter in my life and can't wait to play championship baseball in my hometown. Certainly meaningful for Glasnow to be with the Dodgers. With more on Tyler, we say good afternoon to Kirsten Watson, who's down on the field. Hey, Tim. Well, with talking to Dave Roberts earlier today, he told us that for Tyler Glasnow going into this start today, one, he's excited to be in Dodger blue, to be close to all of his friends and family on the West Coast. That's the first thing. But when it comes to what we're going to expect from him today, it's going to be two innings. Dave Roberts said that we could be seeing him in the upper 90s. He might throw a few curveballs in there, but they're expecting to see nothing but really good things as I mentioned to you guys today the plan is two innings in his buildup and then hopefully his next outing will be three guys out of glass now six feet eight inches tall and he is a strikeout artist he'll be taking on right-hander Victor Medeiros of the Angels as we count you down to the first pitch in Tempe Arizona Here is where you'll find it. The 2024 Los Angeles Dodgers Spring Training on Sportsnet LA. Dodgers baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Carl's Jr., where our signature charbroiled burgers are always the star. Scenic Tepe Diablo Stadium, longtime home of the Angels Spring Training Complex. 
as we get set. Dodgers and Angels for the first time this spring. Mookie Betts back in the lineup at the top of the order. Gavin Lux back in the lineup, too. With more on that, here's Kirsten. Thanks, Tim. Well, first, I'll start with Mookie Betts back at lead, batting leadoff. Dave Roberts has told us that that is where we are going to be seeing him for the rest of the year and playing at second base today. Uh, Gavin Lux is in as the DH. Starting on Monday, we will see him make the transition to playing at shortstop, as I've shared with you guys before. Right now, for Gavin Lux, while his body and his knee is at 100%. Dave Roberts just wants to kind of play it a little slowly, allowing him to get his legs under him to get him ready and keeping him healthy. Then we also have Teoscar Hernandez, who's in at left field. And from speaking with him, he's told me that the plan for all of these guys, the ramp up of playing the back to backs is going to be starting next week. Well, Teoscar Hernandez, rest of the Dodgers, ready to go here on the road in Tempe, just off Interstate 10. Dodgers, Angels, first pitch coming up. Couple of the game superstars getting reacquainted here this afternoon. Mike Trout and Mookie Betts having a little chat on the outfield. A few minutes before the start of this ball game today in Tempe, Arizona, Mookie getting set to lead off. Starting lineups brought to you by your Lexus dealers. Second uh, game in three days. Betts has led off. We'll get used to seeing him in that spot. James Outman will hit second and play center. Chris Taylor over at third base today. Then Teoscar Hernandez will clean up. Austin Barnes will hit fifth and catch. Gavin Lux, the designated hitter. Andy Pajes is the right fielder today. Trey Sweeney, good-looking young shortstop, starting today, batting eight. And Kevin Padlo had a home run in the opener two days ago against the Padres, will bat ninth. And there is Victor Medeiros, first time he's ever faced the Dodgers. 20 starts in double-A last year. A 4-9 record. The Angels pretty high on this guy, and they're hoping that he can have a good showing here today and help the big club this season. Well, he had uh, 21 home runs. Also was allowed in that period of time. He made three relief appearances at the big league level. That was against Atlanta, San Diego, and Arizona. They like his stuff. He's just 22 years of age, so he is still blossoming. But they like what he has, and they just need a little bit more consistency. Well, when they come see Angels games, this is the guy they like to see, Mike Trout. They want to see a healthy Mike Trout this year. Last year, Trout missed 82 games, half the season, and hoping to stay healthy this entire season to try to help the Angels win some ball games. Mookie Betts 
Just about set to go. Did not have a hit in the opener against the Padres in Peoria two days ago. Didn't play yesterday. But he had a couple of walks, reached base twice. Dave Roberts saying uh, the other day, one of the big questions I think from the press has been, okay, what's the batting order going to be? At least the top of the batting order. And Dave was pretty much committed to saying you could see Mookie Betts at the top. Plan on seeing that. Freddie Freeman was asked uh, yesterday about where he fits in, and he won't commit yet, but he said next week the three of us will be in the lineup together, and you'll see them. Meaning Betts, Freeman, and Otani. Yeah, but he was not going to spill the beans on when Otani is going to be the lineup. He knows, but he was not going to disclose it. Right. So here comes Mookie. Facing Medeiros for the first time. Dodgers in their spring training blue jerseys. Road gray pants. So they're underway with a strike. 74 degrees. Very pleasant today. First pitch came at 110. And Mookie is swinging a miss. No balls and two strikes to bats. Madeiras ready for the windup and the 0-2 to Mookie Betts. Struck him out on three pitches. Well, that doesn't happen too many times during the regular season as well. Well, Madeiras, we talked about, well, they want more consistency, in particular throwing strikes. That's exactly what he does the first batter he faces this afternoon. Now James Outman, left-handed batter. Takes a strike, calling the balls and strikes today is Lance Barrett. He'll be the home plate umpire, the base umpires rotating throughout the afternoon will be Bruce Dreckman, Emil Jimenez, and Dexter Kelly. Jimenez and Kelly trying to get more. Major League work and certainly the spring training assignments are the road for that. There's a shot to center field. That's a base hit. James Upman with a single. The Dodgers have the first hit today. Well, I've talked about consistency with Medeiros, and uh, the Dodgers are looking for more consistency from James Upman. Had a couple of different patches of up and down last year, and uh, I mentioned, uh, I think it was yesterday's ball game, that the ball that was problematic, the pitch to Outman seemed to be the one upstairs, and he continued to chase a little bit, maybe out of the strike zone. Chris Taylor batting third and playing third this afternoon. Right handed batter takes inside. 1 0 to Taylor. 237 last year, 15 home runs, drove in 56. And looking for a big year from the utility man. Oh, he just got plunked. That one rode in on him. It seems to be okay, not a problem. Looked like it might have hit him on top of a, a hand, perhaps. A better look at seeing here where it hit him. I missed the hand, fortunately. Yeah, elbow, forearm, somewhere in that area. Yeah, kind forearm. of a glancing blow, fortunately. So first and second and one out, just underway, top of the first inning. Batter is Teoscar Hernandez. Facing Victor Medeiros. Out of the stretch, the pitch. Right down the middle for a called strike. Crazy game. We talked about Medeiros. They wanted more consistency throwing strikes. So he gets Mookie Betts on three pitches, and the third batter, he hits him. <laughs> yep, funny game, isn't it? Not a lot of consistency. I and mean, that's what you're looking for. Wow, and mm. snapped right over the outside corner and a called strike. Well, if that's going to be a strike all afternoon, this game's going to be played very rapidly. Was on the TV side, you'd be the umpire. It's not a strike in spring training, won't be during the regular season. And Hernandez chases one down and away. He strikes out on three pitches, two down. Well, that's the problem as a hitter. When you have a call that goes against you, and all of a sudden, instead of a one and one count, now you're 0 and 2. And you have a tendency to still be frustrated when the next pitch is made as well out of the strike zone. What kind of a wacky first four batters that we've seen in the ballgame? Strange. Austin Barnes facing Medeiros. Barnes working today, a hop, skip, and a jump from where he went to college at Arizona State. Same with Rick. 
Where did he go? Arizona State. You've oh, heard of it. Yeah. I know you've heard of it. In fact, just beyond the center field fence. Yeah. A couple of miles, the campus. Barnes pops it foul right side, not a play. Don't they have a statue of you over there or something? No, no, no. It was it was a dirt mound. <laughs> They said this is good enough. This is it. I will say one thing is that the Buttes down the left field line. Um, now there's hotels are there different things. It used to be the site of Friday night and Saturday night. Well get together. I know you've told me all about yeah. it. Pitch inside the Barnes. That's where the old Arizona State Sun Devils uh, hang out after dark. Yeah. This stadium of course was not there. Nor was anything else in this area. Two ball one strike pitch to Barnes. He hits this one in the air to left center field. Ranging over is Taylor Ward. He'll make the catch. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the top of the first inning. Angels coming to bat against Tyler Glasnow will make his Dodger debut. No score. Bottom of the first inning. Angels will come to the plate against Tyler Glasnow. The Lexus lineups brought to you by your Lexus dealers. Mickey Moniak and uh, Nathan, Nathan uh, Shallowell is a very good prospect and might see a lot of big league time this year. Mike Trout, Michael Stefanik on his birthday today. Ty Taylor Ward, Brandon Drury, Logan O'Hoppy doing the catching, hitting seventh. Joe Adele, right field, and. Zach Neto, the shortstop, young shortstop, batting ninth. So here is Mickey Moniak. New manager Ron Washington says probably would be the leadoff hitter, and he leads off with the first pitch single to center. Didn't waste any time. And then right after Glasnow, first pitch, the Angels have a runner aboard. Uh, for Glasnow, we mentioned a pregame show. He averaged last year to be technical, 96.4 miles an hour. But the big devastating pitch, the slider. Shawnawell out of Florida Atlantic from the Boca Raton area. Actually lived down the street from Florida Atlantic growing up and, and committed to the hometown school. Really started to hit when he got there. This is a guy that the Angels are really high on. And more than likely we're going to see an awful lot of Nolan Shawnawell this year. Uh, he was promoter of the big leagues about a month after he was drafted. He was the 11th pick overall in that draft. Well, Glass now out of the stretch delivers and a hard hit ball up the middle. That's a base hit. To the right of second base, Moniak touches second. He's on his way to third, and the Angels have runners on the corners and nobody out. Base hit for Shawnawa. And two on, nobody out, and you got Mike Trout coming up. 
Uh, you just look at the from fundamentals of swings and especially with younger players that have gotten a lot of attention and you understand why. First and third here's Trout. And the pitch. Fastball and in there for a strike. Angels have had eight straight losing seasons. And six of those eight losing seasons have been when they have had both Shohei Otani and Mike Trout on the roster. They've just not been a team that can close out down the stretch. Not been able to get to the postseason. Yeah, last year they missed out for the 13th time in the last 14 years to get the postseason. And Trout takes a pretty good looking pitch, call the ball. Two and one. Hmm. Bell high and it was high. I guess. Looked pretty good. That one definitely high, the next yep. offer. I'll tell you what, Glasnow can really rush that ball to the plate. Drafted in 2011 by Pittsburgh. Came up through the Pirates system. Oh, right past a swinging Mike Trout for strike two. Three and two. When you talk to hitters that have faced Glasnow, and you ask them about their stuff, a lot of them say, nasty. Here's the payoff. Popped up right side, down the line, a long run over toward the line for Andy Paez. He'll make the catch, and the runner Moniak bluffs from third, throw into the cutoff man Padlo. Oh, there's Mookie Betts. He sneaks in behind the runner at first, and they got Mookie Betts came out of nowhere and surprised Nolan Shonowell, and that turns into a double play. Strange scoring 9-2-4. So we talked yesterday about fundamentals. What's the base running? What's the backup? What's the cutoff and relays? Well, this, you talk about artistry and just having a sense of what to do, where to go. First of all, a good throw by Pajes. Hits the cutoff man, and Mookie Betts on the move. They alertly seem, and what a double play. Nine to two to four. <laughs> the intangibles of a player. I'll tell you what, if you're a young second baseman, watch that play by Mookie Betts on the relay. Well, every play, That's amazing. every ball that is hit, there is some responsibility that you have regardless of your position. Michael Stefanik will take high for a ball. Stefanik, the third baseman. Nine three four. Yeah, you just you don't want to stand on the field and do nothing. And Mookie just by moving his feet contributing. Heck of a tag too. Where he caught the ball, made the catch and the tag in the same motion. That is a big time play. So Moniak the runner at third, two down on the pitch to Stefanik is outside for a ball. Count goes to 3 and 0 on Michael Stefanik with Taylor Ward on deck. Well, with Mookie Betts, if you put him on a horse, I don't know how well he'll play the game of polo, but everything else, it looks like, well, it's in his back pocket and he's got it. 3 0 high ball, four, first walk for Glasnow. Well, Glasnow comes from a high school that has produced a lot of good pitchers. Mark Pryor coming out to talk to him right now, of course. Tyler from there. Uh, Trevor Bauer went there. James Shields went there. Going all the way back to Bob Walk. Bob Walk from New Hall, California. Went to Hart High School in Santa Clarita. But they have uh, they've had some very good pitchers come out of there over the years. He's 30 years of age. But Right now, trying to get on track. He's made 15 pitches, but only six have been in the strike zone. If you look at his delivery, I mean, he is very much right over the top. I expect to see two innings out of him today. Facing Taylor Ward. Breaking ball up high. No score early going. Bottom of the first, two on and two out for the Angels. Right handers 164 against Glasnow last year. This one slapped to the air toward right center. Andy Pajes on the run toward the gap. He hauls it in. And it's a scoreless first. 
for Tyler Glasnow. We go to the second inning in Tempe. It's the Dodgers nothing, Angels nothing. No score. Second inning. Gavin Lux will lead off for the Dodgers. He's saying uh, Victor Medeiros. It's already been a defensive change. Ron Washington came out with a lineup card, and he has removed third baseman Michael Stefanik already. And Cole Fontanelle is the new third baseman over there, number 76. So usually this early in a game. You probably chalked that up to an injury of some sort. We didn't see anything or notice anything. We don't want to speculate, but well, you would think is it early, earlier on? You know, you feel something, whether it's a you know a leg that tightens up a little bit. Pitch to Lux. He'll take a strike. Two balls and a strike to Gavin. So Gavin, as Kirsten reported earlier, will get back to playing shortstop Monday. Another. Start today as the designated hitter. Slaps it on the ground is short. That is picked up by Neto. Throws on to first and Lux is out. One away for the Dodgers in the second. Lux really a chance to, to kind of get his feet underneath him and you know get a smell of the game before he has to go over and, and, and go into shortstop. And then it's going to be, well, okay, fine. We're hearing his uh, you know reconstructed knee is fine. There's no limitations on that end. Andy Pajes, right handed hitting right fielder, takes a strike. But for Gavin Lux, it comes down to is that, you know, once you're out of the mix, and he mixed, uh, you know, all of last year, you know, to get back in and have a nose for the ball, if you will, you know, that's the part that, that the players seem to lose the edge. So it's really imperative. I think a good move by Dave Roberts saying, go in there, be the DH for the first couple of games. Andy pa has weights. He chops this one foul. Andy had a, a strange injury last year on a swing. He was swinging the bat. And his, uh, his shoulder basically came apart. <laughs> and he didn't really feel the pain, he said, until later. And turned out he had to be shut down early last year due to the problem with the labrum. And he swings here, and he is out on strikes. Two down. That's the third strikeout for Medeiros. Well, Medeiros, good fastball. He can get that thing up to 99 on a good day. He's got some sink on it. Yeah, he got away Hard with the breaking slider. ball. It was up in the strike zone right there. But you know, hitters, you're not really expecting that pitch right there. And, for, and from hitter standpoint, I mean, this is early. You're trying to track the baseball. And I, I said, game one, retrain your eyes. Well, Trey Sweeney takes a strike. Keep an eye on this guy. On the first round pick of the Yankees and seeing him get some time at shortstop making a start at short today. 
player like this could provide some depth for the Dodgers infield wise during the course of the season. One one pitch. That one is bang foul right in front of the plate. You look at Swainy and say he just looks like a good hitter. I mean fundamentally. I mentioned in game one. You know he kind of. Uh, you know rocks the bat on the left shoulder. A timing mechanism. He just wonders it. Okay fine. Uh, does he find himself. Sometimes in the middle of that tap of the bat on the left shoulder. One two is inside that skips away from the catcher Logan O'Hoppy. There's always movement from a hit. On the TV side on the simulcast. That's just the way that, that he goes where they'll be rocking back and forth. But there's always movement. Is it with the hands is it with the uh, the hips is it with the leg. Sometimes it's the front knee that buckles in. 3 2 pitch to the left handed hitting Sweeney. He'll get another. He bounds it off. Tim, that's like you look at hitters sometimes and say, well, he has a hitch. He drops his hands. Well, there's nothing wrong with the hitch as long as you bring the hands back up where you're able to protect the upper part of the strike zone. Sweeney awaits the payoff pitch. Here it comes. And it's grounded to third. And Right there Fontenelle into the game throws a little bit high and off the bag the catch was made by Shotwell and he tags Sweeney. So the Dodgers are done in order in the top half of the second inning no score in Tempe. Everybody. Watch MLB.tv and stream 250 plus spring training games and every out of market game live or on demand. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. <laughs> that is teaching them right. Young Dodger fans here in Tempe. Sellout crowd today. Brandon Drury. 26 homers last year. He was really productive for the Angels. 83 runs batted in. Firms are sold out. Everything was sold out today. Parking was sold out, right, Rick? Um, <laughs> there seems to be some confusion in the parking lots <laughs> as uh, spring training gets underway. I was kicked out of the same parking spot not once, <laughs> but twice, and then told to go back to that same spot. Well, you listen to and follow directions well. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's a good trait. Can't beat fun of the old ballpark. No. Well, Drury's got a one ball, two strike count on. I mean, look at the home run hitters last year. Drury was just behind Shoy Otani, who had 44 in his American League MVP campaign. There's a hot shot down to third off the backhand of Taylor, and Sweeney will have to chase it down in the outfield. 
That ball was smoked down to third by Drury, and that'll be a hit. Boy, that's a self protection play down to third base by Chris Taylor. He saw that ball, the line drive hooking from his left to his right. Well, that's the ball you stay in front of. You'd be uh, having soup through a straw for about a week. Ball just a little in between. Logan O'Hoppy. Right handed hitting catcher now batting takes a strike. We'll look for a few curveballs out of Tyler Glasnow. This figures to be his second and final inning today. That was a big, big pitch for him last year. Delivers a strike and it's 0 and 2. Opponents hit only 095 against his curveball last year, 10 for 105. And he drew a lot of swings and misses. 52. A little bit 52 plus percent of the time he got a swing and miss on his curveball. Well, that slider got a lot of swings and miss too. The other part too is that with Glass now, if you go back to last uh, last year, first pitch strikes, he was like clockwork last year. There's a swing and a miss, and out on strikes is Logan O'Hoppy. One down. Speaking of strikes, last year 69 percent of his first pitches were strikes in that first inning. Just one of the uh, the five batters, and that was the first pitch he threw in the ball game to Mookie Betts that reached the strike zone. Well, after the first pitch strike last season, opponents hit just 154. So you talk about the best pitch in the book, and anybody in baseball will tell you this: what's the best pitch? No, well, it's not a fastball. It's strike one. Yeah. Strike one is the best pitch. Uh, Joe Adele, he's had a lot of opportunities with the Angels and really has never been able to grab a full time spot in the outfield. You know, he's still trying to find his way. He shows big power, but he has just really been lacking as far as the batting approach consistently at the big league level. But for the new manager, Ron Washington, he's full of encouragement. This one is smacked toward the left center field gap. That's going to get down and go to the wall. James Outman will chase it down on the warning path. Coming around third is Drury. He will score. Throw goes into third too late. And a run scoring triple for Joe Adele. The Angels lead it 1 0. Trying to impress his manager in his first at bat. He has certainly been able to do that. For Adele, just very quick hands, really kind of a puzzle as why he's not really been, been able to, to come through and be more consistent than he has to this point in his career. He has power, he has speed, the quickness on top of it has just been inconsistent. Eric Young Sr., third base coach, you saw him, he, he did a belly flop to let his uh, runner know, hey, it's going to be close. Shortstop Zach Neto takes a strike. Now watch at the top of the screen Eric Young Jr. I hope that was voluntarily and designed and not by accident. Uh, looked like the turf monster <laughs> reached up and grabbed him, right? Uh, EY Senior. He's one of the nice people. And he's typically been a first base coach in yep. his time in the big league. So now over there at third for the Angels. I think he might have tripped over the chalk line on the coach's box. Might have been it. <laughs> Ball and two strikes to Neto. Adele the runner at third and one man out. Glass now's pitch. Well, it's now two and two. That was a really good looking pitch. It's been a, an interesting strike zone to this point. On the TV side, you can be the umpire. Maybe a little low. Now we'll get another look at it. We don't have the same angle. Well, if we, that's low, let's normal. go back and talk about a pitch that was to Mike Trout. There was a belt buckle high, and that <laughs> yeah. was considered high. Yeah. Well, if that's high, how can the other one be low? Well, that's spring training for everyone. Yeah, this is an older ballpark. Including there's parking lot attendance. There's a really big uh, uh, batter's eye out there. Mm -hmm. So. The only center field camera we have is just to the left field side of the batter's eye. Oh, and a diving stop by Sweeney. Oh, and quick as a cat to his backhand side, Trey Sweeney steals a hit and saves a run right there. Well, you were talking earlier about Sweeney. Interesting as a hitter. Well, he just made himself even more interesting as a player, defensive player. 
That is so difficult to make because that ball is is hooking away from you. That's going to be it for Glasnow. He's reached his pitch limit, so he won't get the full two innings. He'll get an inning and two thirds, giving up a run on four hits so far. Book still open on it, but Tyler Glasnow's Dodger debut is over with a pitching change here in Tempe. Tyler Glasnow, inning in two thirds, four hits. One earned run so far, one walk, one strikeout, 34 pitches. So, right around where they want to get him out after uh, this stage of the game. Usually two innings, 30 pitches around there, but they let him go 34. And the new pitcher is Ben Harris, left hander coming on over from minor league camp. And he is facing the top of the order, Mickey Moniak, the designated hitter who singled in the first inning. And his next pitch to Moniak is fouled away. No balls and two strikes. Ben Harris. Double A last year. Yeah, swing and a miss. He takes care of business, striking out Moniak. And that ends the Angels' second, where they get a run on two hits. They leave a man. Right at Telecast is presented by Authority of the Los Angeles Dodgers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Dodgers. 
Top of the third inning, one nothing Angels. New pitcher, right-hander Davis Daniel takes over. Seven starts in the, or seven appearances, I should say, in the minor leagues last year. And Kevin Padlo, Thursday in the opener in Peoria against the Padres, just hammered this baseball, put it under the canopy and left for a two-run shot and his first at bat in a Dodger uniform. So well, he ambushed that oh. breaking ball, hit it out of the ballpark. Yeah, he crushed it. Well, Padlo batting ninth and starting today at first base again. And Davis Daniel kicks and fires. That ball is a breaking pitch outside. Mookie Betts on deck. Look at Daniel. There's a guy who's he's 26 years old. He was drafted three times. Pitch is up high and away. Three appearances at the big league level. They like him. He, he's had some impressive numbers at the minor league level. And with problems out of the bullpen for the Angels, there's plenty of opportunity this year. Strike call to Pablo. He was drafted by the Cubs 2016, 2018 by the Brewers. And in 19, the Angels got him in the seventh round. So he said, okay, that's good. Third time was a charm for him. Fires a strike in there, and it's now three and two. Angels bullpen, ERA of almost four, nine. And Padlo takes strike three. Well, that ball was right over the plate. He goes down looking, and there's one gone for the Dodgers here in the third inning. And Mookie Betts. Oh for one strikeout victim saw three pitches and went down swinging in the first. And now sees a strike here. Daniel winds kicks delivers. It's in the dirt. And as a hitter especially in these early games are you taking the same approach you'd take midseason or are you taking a different approach sometimes well, you, you have you don't have enough of bats to even have an approach right now is, is basically I think if you look at all the hitters say look let's look for strikes that's the biggest thing you know you're still working on the swing you're still working on the fundamentals you know even the guys who are working out during the offseason for those that travel okay if you park your car at the airport or Train station, wherever it might be. Go on a two week vacation and you come back. Does it feel a little strange when you get behind the wheel of the car and drive? Well, how about a few months and now you're trying to hit a baseball that's going 95 miles an hour? It's only going 60 feet, six inches, and you have to try and hit it. Talk about feeling awkward behind the wheel of a car. Two, two pitches high, three and two. But again, it goes back to what I'm saying train the eyes, train the eyes. How do you pick up the baseball? How do you track the baseball? And then the determination, where is your strike zone? Payoff pitch, breaking ball outside, and Mookie Betts has drawn his third walk of the spring. One out and a man aboard. Mookie Betts represents the tying run with James Outman walking up. Crazy game, strike out one guy in three pitches and walk the next guy. You never know. Mookie, good size lead at first base. Out of the stretch, Davis Daniel. Pitch fouled back to the screen by Altman. Fastball by Daniel. About 95 miles per hour. And has been known to have a very high spin rate on the fastball. Curveball kind of an over the top 12 to 6 variety. Diving back to first is Betts safely on the throw over. Yeah, I'm going to run a problem as I mentioned a couple of different times in the season. Hit 218 last year in the month of September. You know where he was really kind of consistent for for a young rookie at 260 with runners in scoring position. Pitch is high, a fastball. One ball, one strike, two out. We talked about this the other day, but it was this time of the year last year where Altman got off to a good start in the Cactus League, and the better he hit. The more time he got, the more at bats he got, and he ended up earning himself a spot on the big club for opening day. We start to look at numbers. Outman hit 249 at home, he hit 248 on the road. More home runs away from Dodger Stadium last year. 15. 
pitch and Upman takes a strike it's two and two. Well James will always have Colorado and what we mean by that is when he was called up two years ago his first major league at bat was a home run at Coors Field. And it was a no doubter. Swings and pops this one up back a third. Fontenelle will give way to the shortstop Neto who'll make the catch just in foul territory behind the third baseline. Now two men around. Mookie bets back to first base. Yeah, that one's going to be fine. You know, I mentioned last year and on the television side getting a, a look. The expanse of the outfield there's only three guys that cover all that acreage. But for Altman he started out last year rather tentatively I thought defensively and then he got into the swing of things where he played like he owned the outfield and he did first pitch to Taylor's outside for a ball. He's a quick study. Taylor was plunked his first time up. That's good lead at first. And another pitch outside snap throw down there by Ohapi and Mookie Betts dives back safely. He's about as far off as he's going to get in terms of a lead at this point. If he gets another inch or two he's going to have to go. And the pitch swung on and that is fouled off in front of the Dodger dugout on the third base side. Chris Taylor sometimes that swing gets a little bit long. Mentioned the other day in, in Peoria against the, the Padres. Chris Taylor is going to be a very big guy in this lineup, in particular against left handed pitching. Daniels' pitch is hit in the air down the right field side, but foul. Joe Adele, the closest player to it for the Angels, but. Still pretty far away. And the reason I say against left handed pitching in particular, if you look at Jason Hayward, Hayward had, I think it was 29 at bats against left handed pitching. And that was it. Official plate appearances. So that opens up the door for Chris Taylor and someone else to play in the outfield against lefties in particular. Pitch. And that's there for called strike three, watched by Taylor. Inside is retired. Mookie Betts left on base after drawing his third walk in spring training. One nothing Angels after two and a half. One nothing Angels bottom of the third inning veteran right hander Daniel Hudson back on top of the hill 2022 and 25 appearances but he's had issues with the left knee we go back to a night in Atlanta just did not land on it right and caused him some major issues with the knee 
And that has not been a good thing for him. He missed most of last year, pitched just three scoreless innings for the Dodgers before going on the injured list. Trying to rehab the remainder of the year. And all reports pretty good so far, though, for Daniel Hudson this year. Sean well, the first baseman, grounds it to the glove side. Mookie bets right there, and he'll throw him out. Well, Mookie had to go a long way to get that ball to his left. And makes a very good play. Well, he goes a long way. Of course, uh, we talked about, well, all over the place, and he's already been there. Part of a terrific double play in the first inning. So, ranging a long way. By the way, we got a, uh, an update on... Stefanik on why he left and indeed it was a tightness left quad. Mike Trout at the plate against Hudson fouls the first pitch back. Trout is 0 for 1. He flied to right field that ended up starting a double play that was finished by Mookie Betts at first base. Just snuck in behind the base runner Shanawa. For Hudson that slider. When he is on it's devastating. He's had a lot of success in his major league career. Well, before that injury, and it showed it's painful to look at it, uh, even more painful to, to suffer it. But before the injury, Hudson Slider allowed just a 116 batting average against it. I mean, it was devastating. Just trying to regain the form. And if he can, certainly the Dodgers would love to have him help out out of the bullpen. Well, that adds so much depth. And then the reliability of, of a veteran that knows what he's doing. Trout pops this one up foul back and out of play. I mean, the, the numbers are, I mean, 116 average on the slider. Just five hits and 43 at bats when he threw the slider. I mean, those numbers are off the charts. And last year he had to rehab when he got into some games. He took part in some rookie level games at the Arizona Complex League. Also in AAA Oklahoma City. Uh, Trout hits one high in the air to right playable for Pajes. Pajes with the glasses on looks up into the cloudy sky and pulls the ball in his glove for out number two. But for Hudson he ended up making six starts and you say well why is he starting in the minor leagues. Well they do that so he can get an inning in guaranteed at the beginning of the game. And when you come in the game you know when you're starting there's nobody on base to start the game. You get him a clean inning. So the minor leagues are used that way uh, a number of times during the year for rehabbing pitchers. So here is Cole Fontenelle. His first plate appearance. No time called and Barnes wants to go out and make sure he's on the same page with Hudson. Daniel Hudson has a total of 754 major league strikeouts. He's appeared in 482 games over the course of his career. 61 of those he has started. But most of them, the vast majority of them, he's come out of the bullpen. Hudson's off or outside. One ball and one strike to Fontenelle. And like the pitchers that throw that splitter, he puts the split grip on the baseball. To begin with, and then goes into the glove as he comes set. Follow the way to the left. A ball and two strikes. And the reason they do that is that you're using such a, a different grip on the baseball. You know, hitters are looking at everything, and if you start to to, to fool around with the, the ball and the glove, you see the glove expand. There were some guys that, that was the read. The glove expands. It might be a split. Pitch in the dirt skips away from Barnes. It's All two kinds two. of things hitters are looking at, Tim. Do you go up over your head in the wind up with a fastball and only go up maybe to your to your nose, your eyes on a breaking ball? There are little tips here and there that sometimes you can garner. Three and two now on inside pitch. And then you run into the pitcher that that knows in the past he's tipped him, and then in a critical situation he'll change it. Here comes the payoff. And a foul ball and a check swing. Fontanelle. Taylor Ward on deck. Got another 
great day here. Some more clouds in the sky than we've had the last couple of days, but no big deal. No wind to speak of at all. 74 degrees, the game time temperature. Pitch up high ball four. And Hudson issues the two out walk to Fontenelle. And tomorrow, the Dodgers back home at Camelback Ranch. They'll take on the Athletics. You see the flags here at the ballpark. Not too busy today. Which is outside to Ward, the right handed hitting left fielder. Hudson out of the stretch, runner at first leads. That's Fontenelle, and here's the pitch. That's outside. And it's 2 0. Two balls, no strikes. Hudson kicks and fires. Gets a swing and a miss. That's a bread and butter pitch for him. Now the 2 1. Hit in the air to left field. Coming on is Tasca Hernandez will make a chest high catch to end the inning. No runs, no hits, one left. We go to the fourth, one nothing, Angels. The first 40,000 fans in attendance at Dodger Stadium March 30th will receive a Freddie Freeman bobblehead. Presented by Bank of America. For tickets and information, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. one nothing Angels, top of the fourth inning. Teoscar Hernandez will lead off. Speaking of Freddie Freeman, off today, and he will play, told us yesterday, he will play the next three days in a row. Robert. He wants to start getting into that back-to-back -back mode. Hernandez will take a strike. Teoscar struck out swinging in the first 0 for 1 today. He asks for time and gets it. Davis Daniel gets ahead of him. Daniel out there for the second inning of work. Some defensive changes already for the Angels. Ron Washington going to the deeper part of his roster. Already. Mike Trout's out of the ball game. Jake Marisnik is in in center. Taylor Ward, the left fielder, is out, and Willie Calhoun is in. And the first baseman, Nolan Shawnawell, is out, and Hunter Dozier has taken over for him. Hernandez pops it up right side of the infield. And the second baseman, Brandon Drury, calling for it. He's got it, and there's one away. 
Austin Barnes will hit. Barnes and then Gavin Lux on deck. A oh, wine of the pitch, and that is up high for a ball. One oh. Barnes hits it down the right side now to play. Well, this was your part of town for a while when you were at ASU. You've been, uh, oh, you spent tons of time here in Arizona. Absolutely. Lived here for a while. Had a business here. One, one missing, two and one to Barnes. This place has uh, really grown. Interstate 10, just out beyond the right field fence, and a lot of people here. You know, originally it was the Seattle Pilots that were in this stadium. Taking ball for a call strike. And this was a factory for shin splints. This was the hardest surface. This looked like playing in a parking lot years and years ago. Why do you suppose the grass was so hard? Well, it was everything was hard. Even the ground underneath the, the grass. It just I don't know if it wasn't watered enough, whatever, but I mean this was just an extremely difficult place. And if the ball was hit in the air and hit on the ground, it was like bouncing on AstroTurf. Barnes grounds out to short, two down. And Gavin Lux 0 for 1. He grounded out to short in second inning. Davis Daniel fires one home, and Lux swings and fouls it back. That layoff for Lux, everything is, is timing. And the hitting has to be so precise. But boy, the good news is that there's Seems to be no after effects from that that surgery. I think a lot of times you get to about that one year mark and you say, okay, now you're really feeling fully confident because you, you know mm -hmm. you, you've had injuries. A lot of players have had. Well, had you can be told back. you're okay, but you have to be able to experience it and believe it. Right. That one's hit up the middle, and that'll behind the bag bobbles it. Lux is going to be safe. Yeah, just watching Lux go down the line. He's showing no after effects of, of that surgery. He can scamper. He has very good speed to begin with, and hopefully it's not going to be curtailed at all. It'll be a base hit for Lux. Well, you can see him going down the line immediately. So there's no pause. There's no hesitation. Tough play for Neto at shortstop. So watch him come out of the box. He has the play in front of him. Andy Pajes at the plate now. He struck out swinging in the second inning. Pajes has been one of the top outfield prospects for the Dodgers, continuing to come up through the system. And right now, it looks like he could be ready to make a jump. There's one down the left field line. A hot shot off the bat of Pajes. Lux around second. He's on his way to third. He'll be waved home by Dino Ebel. And into second with an RBI double is Andy Pajes. That ties the game at one. Last year we talked about Pajes and, and his quick hands. Lux again scampering all the way from first to home plate showed no slowing down at all. Dino Ebel did not hesitate in sending him around third and, and scoring. But for Pajes, boy, he just went down and got a breaking ball. Really quick bat. Here's Lux. He knew he had extra time just knowing that the ball was down the line. Trey Sweeney fouls it back and Tim like like any injury is it how you feel the next day and this is going to be a big test how does Gavin Lux feel tomorrow morning he gets out of bed scampered down to first baseline and it goes from first to third being talked to by the trainers in the dugout chopper foul well, the Dodgers have been very good at two out RBIs. Got another one here. Led Major League Baseball in them last year. 369. Two out runs batted. Foul ball hit down past Dino Evil at third. Dino jumping out of the way. Dino telling me yesterday his sons are going to be out here pretty soon working out. 
Boy, they're good players they too. Really good. There's a that's the new version of the pitch out right there, by the way. <laughs> you don't see the traditional pitch out, but that one was a intentional ball to Sweeney. Yeah, Dino's oldest is going to LSU. And is going to be considered one of the top prospects. Youngest son uncommitted right now. There's a fly ball, shallow left. Coming in Willie Calhoun to make the catch. Andy Pajes getting the Dodgers on the board, ripping this one down the third baseline for two bags, and Gavin Lux scoring from first base after three and a half innings. Dodgers one, Angels one. Welcome back to Tempe Arizona. I have today's starter and who also made his Dodger debut Tyler Glass now putting on Dodger blue. You've told us that just coming back to Los Angeles being back to where you grow up. What has this been like for you. It's been amazing. I got family here and uh, it's just all been like a whirlwind I guess to sign back my hometown team and then just get to do spring training and learn from all the coaches and everything here and then get to do uh, game one. It's been awesome. Just considering it's still very early in spring. How would you just assess your outing today. Not very good, but I think in terms of like things I've been working on and like feeling wise and like metrics, they were good uh, as far as like execution, not the best. But I think that's kind of what springs for, especially early on, uh, just iron some things out. But as far as like health and like I said, metrics, it was it was good. So I'll take it. What is something that you focus on during the spring that I guess one of those things that's just kind of whether it's a priority or a piece that allows you to know that you're ready for the season? Uh, I think it's a mixture of things. I think like in practice you work on the things that you're trying to improve and then I think the biggest part for spring especially for me is like learning how to get away from like the practice headspace while you're in a game. So I think it's like the first time you get a you have to be like okay now I'm competing I'm against hitters as opposed to being like if you're in a live BP or a bullpen you're kind of like okay I'm working on this thinking about that. So I think it's a nice separation like it takes a couple in spring to get used to it but it's like the, you got to learn like compete and then practice. So I think it's like the first time you get thrown into that and it's it's like it's super important. I, I enjoy spring. For players who come to this organization, they always talk about just what it's like working with the pitching coaches here. What has been just your takeaway and your experience getting to know the guys, whether it's Connor McGinnis or even Mark Pryor? They're extremely experienced. I've uh, been around a long time. They add, they like complement each other well, you know, prior playing and like having like that on field feel and like a really good pitching coach as far as like cues and stuff and then Connor's like the the brain nerd kind of like he'll he you can mix up everything so I think it's it's really cool just to have two pitching coaches and have like things you can bounce off of people and then like they're both just really good dudes and good people too so it's like a nice little little pitching love triangle you know it's nice yeah people use that one now when it comes to though just working with the catchers and getting used to working whether it's with Will Smith today Austin Barnes what has that been like it's been good. There were two phenomenal catchers. So I think like the the learning period is a bit shorter than maybe like standard. But I think for me sometimes, especially if I'm a little bit around the, like outside of the zone, it's like learning 
maybe how to like get me back in and like they're the small things like where to set up and everything but it's been such a seamless transition like uh we just talk a few times and like anything i say like every like they have suggestions and you know what i mean like well it's just it's pretty buttoned down and like ironed out really good so i think like even just a few times i've thrown to them it's been like i've been thrown to them for a long time now, Dave Roberts hasn't confirmed anything, but he did say it's a safe bet that we could potentially be seeing you pitch in South Korea. With the understanding of that, does the build-up look any different for you right now? No, I'm sure maybe just, like, start throwing, like, I, if I wasn't, maybe I'd pitch, like, later in spring and then, like, build up. But I think it's just probably, like, maybe one extra start or just start a bit early. But I think for the most part, like... With the date of it, it's probably relatively the same. Yeah. Obviously, this offseason, with the addition of you, with Shohei Otani, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, there's been so much excitement around, especially the pitching, the staff that we have here. What is just your reaction of getting to know those guys and getting to know all of the, just the pitching staff and the starters in this group here? It's been great. I think there's a it's a very like high character, like cool person team. I guess like I think Andrew does like kind of makes that a priority of like having good teammates as as well as very good players. So. There's everyone in the clubhouse is awesome, especially getting to know all the new guys. It's been kind of like I said, like an easy transition where everyone gets along really well and everyone's like very driven. So I'm just I'm excited to get going and get to know everyone even more. Yeah, Mookie has told us that he did not love facing you. Is there any guys on this team that have come up to you and you're like, I am so glad that you are now my teammate and I don't have to face you anymore? Uh, honestly, like when, when Mookie left, uh, sorry. When Mookie, when Mookie left the division, like when he left Boston, that was cool because I hated facing him then. I, I don't like facing Freddie. I don't know. Ty Oscar does really good against me as well. Honestly, like the whole team is, has done some pretty good things against me. So it's nice to know that I don't have to throw to them anymore. Now, what about the defense you have behind you as well? I mean, it plays like yeah. Mookie Betts had today. How impressive are those moments? Yeah, phenomenal. Like uh, the defense is really good. I think that's like a big thing that the Dodgers pride themselves in. They've always been really good defenders. Really good, honestly, all-around baseball player. So it is, I, it's like a pitcher's dream to have a good defense behind him, and I have that, so it's been great. All right, so I have a few fun questions for you. Obviously, you're very tall, I'm very tall, and there's always an assumption that I played some type of sport. So what sport do people think that you played when you're walking around? Basketball, usually, yeah. Did you play basketball? When I was little. I wasn't, like, phenomenal by any means, but I didn't, like, love it. Like, I loved baseball or track either, so I just... Not, not really, but it's fun until they started making me like run plays. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like, yeah. So in track, what was your, were you 400? What kind of was your race? I did the 100 long jump, high jump, and yeah, yeah. But I wasn't like super fast, so like the 100, I was like, mm, maybe not. But high jump was my best event for sure. So now this is a question from Connor McGinnis, you know, part of the love triangle. If you were to play, if you played in a movie, who would you want to act you at? I think I, I keep hearing the Killian Murphy thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Someone else. Like, I don't know. It's pretty, it's like, I think it's an, an accurate view, I guess. It's like, even before all this stuff, my family was like, you kind of look like that guy. So I think I just have to choose him. Would you do the haircut? Would you cut it short? Being in L.A. now, you might get confused for him. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe. I'm a little taller, I think. But he. I, I, there's some similarities. I used to have kind of short hair like him, too. So, But I, I think I'll keep the, the long hair for a while. Who knows? So. Tyler, a pleasure getting to know you, getting to have some fun with this. Appreciate you as always, and best of luck in your next outing. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks. Every time I see Peaky Blinders, I see Tyler Glasner, Killian Murphy, <laughs> his doppelganger. Well, if you're a pitching coach, a manager, or just a team, isn't it nice to know, first of all, you have talent with intelligence on top of it? I mean, do well spoken. Very bright young man, and boy, what a big addition to this Dodger rotation. Yeah, he's an impressive guy. Angels with another run. We'll catch you up here. Brandon Drury walked. Logan O'Hoppy struck out looking. Joe Adele doubled. And then with uh, Drury at third base, Nettle with a sacrifice fly to center field. Now Mickey Moniak is up facing Mike Flynn. Flynn over from minor league camp out of uh, University of Arizona. He is an Anaheim guy. Servite High School and pitching against his hometown team. Oh, yeah, it fouls it off. So you talk about Glasnow doing, you know, whatever his sports were in high school. You realize he grew a foot in one year. He showed up one day, he was 5'8. A little while later, he came back at 6'8. He had a serious growth spurt. Yep. And sometimes that's not real pleasant for him as far as the feeling with the bones growing that quickly. 
Well, a hit hard foul past first base. Two to one Angels lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. I thought very uh, very fair appraisal of his, of his outing. It wasn't like he was critical of it and, and he looked at the bigger picture. I mean it's the first time out again. It's like OK going on vacation coming back getting behind the wheel of your car it feels a little awkward for a while. Same way in taking the field all of a sudden you can hit and hit and throw and throw it on the sidelines. Once popped up third base side Chris Taylor in foul territory. And behind the third base coaches box he makes the catch for the final out a run on a hit. Man left. We'll go to the fifth. Angels two, Dodgers one. Make sure to be at Dodger Stadium Monday, April 1st for Fernando Valenzuela Jersey Night, sponsored by Bank of America. Visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. I was talking to Fernando about that today. He said, uh, yeah, April 1st. He said, no, yeah. no coincidence that that's the Jersey Night. Uh, Pepe Enigas is on the phone telling everyone, hey, don't don't miss the Fernando event. That's right. Well, Fernando and I were here together a number of years ago. Uh, interesting. His son Fernando Jr. was a really good college player and was playing in the NCAA regional tournament here against Arizona State. And he played at UNLV. And they got down to the finals. But Fernando Jr. had to play uh, uh, first the whole time, but they ran out of pitching. The uh, UNLV team did. And the head coach went to the chalkboard and said, Anybody who's got an inning. Put your name on the board. First guy to do it was Fernando Jr., but he never put him in. But in that game, interestingly enough, the right fielder for Arizona State was none other than Andre Ethier. And he robbed Fernando Jr. of a home run. And Fernando and I were recollecting that today. Family still has not forgotten. No. <laughs> well. Dustin Pedroia was the shortstop. That'll give you an idea how long ago that was, and uh, tough to go. And how good a team it was. Yeah, they were really good. Kevin Pablo hits it in the air to right, and drifting over now. Jordan Adams just in the game. Adams, a really good prospect for the Angels. And there's a guy that will have a name to remember. Probably see a lot of him in the near future. Pablo is out, one gone, and now Mookie Betts coming up for the third time. Fernando went to almost every game that his son played that last year he played in college right before he signed with the Padres in fact he signed here at this ballpark right after that last game against Arizona State he signed the contract and was off to uh, I think he went to Fort Wayne but uh, that's when Fernando came back to broadcasting was right after that game 
and he has been with the Dodgers broadcast crew on the Spanish side ever since. Okay, 0 for 1. Walked last time up. Last year, Mookie with 96 walks, fifth most in the National League. Dodgers walked to the second most last year behind the Padres. Padres walked more than anybody. And the Dodgers were a close second. That's got to be part of his game as a leadoff hitter. It always has been, actually. He can be patient at times, and he can draw the walks. Because the job of the leadoff hitter is primarily to get on base. He can also, even though the leadoff spot count gets in his way, he can also power the department. You know, return to sender address unknown and, and do some damage. The pitcher is Gio Zuniga. Right hander. Some other changes we'll tell you about here for the Angels. Um, Washington's been running a different crew out there each inning, slowly replacing the starters. And Luki fouls it back. And Jordan Adams, you already saw in right field. So a new outfield with Marisnik in center and Calhoun in left. And Jordan Adams joins them. Kyron Paris is the new shortstop. Levon Soto out there at second base. And Mookie drops one into left center field for a base hit. It's his first hit of the spring. And the tying run aboard with one out in the fifth. Big names in a game of, of baseball. When Mookie Betts walked across the field today before the game, the applause and really the walk from the stands was, was something to watch. And Moki just delivered a big smile and a wave. James Outman takes the ball, one and zero. Zuniga from Cartagena in Colombia. Right-hander set, bets with a lead. He goes for second, and Outman swings and fouls it back. Don't normally see a lot of stolen bases in spring training, but you got to try it. That's what you're going to do during the regular season. Well, I like that too. First of all, you can stretch the legs with uh, with Betts. Then he gave the safe sign, like, okay, let, let's not do that again. And the other part of it, uh, of it though, is you put the hit and run on. The emphasis is, look, you've got to make contact. As the hitter. And the next pitch to Outman is popped up foul third base side that'll go over the dugout. And Hoppy was set up. He was going to make a snap throw down to first base just in case there was a big leadoff by Mookie Betts. I mean, he was already positioning himself as the pitch was on his way to home plate. Next offer, a late throw to first, and Mookie gets back with the right hand tag. <laughs> this might be it for the Dodgers in terms of the starters today. We get to the fifth inning, they're getting into their third at bats. Betts goes for second again, and again, Outman fouls it back. Oh, you mentioned earlier in the first at bat, the first batter of the ball game, Betts struck out, then he walked in the third. And even then, the point that you brought up was the size of the lead that Betts was taking. I mean, you look at it and say, hey, wait a minute. It puts a thought in the pitcher's mind. And again, you only get a couple of throws over, but that's a big lead. That was a balk. Oh, yep, that's a balk right there. You, yeah. You called it before they did. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a balk. Yes. A slight hesitation. He started to go stop. Wasn't by much. All you have to do is, is to move an inch. Now watch you flinch. See right there? That's a balk. Started, stopped, and started again. 
A time running scoring position now. And Outman leaves and misses here. He goes down on strikes. Two men out. It'll be up to Chris Taylor to try to get Mookie Betts around. Yeah. can really fire the fastball. He's a triple digits guy. Anywhere from 97 to 101. Pretty solid fastball there, swung on, pulled foul past the camera wall on the third base side. Well, Taylor can get the swing back on track and make the contact. Yeah, you know, we go back a, a couple of years ago. We talked about Chris Taylor. I think pound for pound hit the ball as hard as anyone in baseball. Pitch outside to Taylor. One ball, one strike. Angels with single runs in the second inning and the fourth. The Dodgers with a single run in the fourth. Two to one Angel lead, top of the fifth. That's it, second, two down. Pitch to Chris Taylor, the 1 1 from Zuniga. And it's fouled away to the right. So Luki Betts has checked the box early. Breaking for second, trying to steal a bag twice. Got advanced over there anyway on the balk. One two pitch. Check swing, appeal down to first base, and umpire there said he went around. So Taylor strikes out, leaves Betts at second base. Dodgers get a hit. Middle of the fifth inning, two to one, Angels. Two runs, five hits for the Angels. One run, four hits for the Dodgers. Mookie Betts' afternoon is done. James Outman's afternoon is done. And Matt Gage just getting started. Last year in AAA, 34 appearances on a 4.58 ERA, one and one. 39 strikeouts, 37 and a third innings pitched for Sugarland in the. PCL Pacific Coast League, the Sugarland Skeeters. Also had five games with the Houston Astros out of Siena College in New York. He is pitching to Hunter Dozier, the first pitch fouled off. So the lefty, Matt Gage, making his first spring appearance for the Dodgers. Drew Avens is in center field now, and Austin Gothier is at second base. Everybody else still in there. The gauge high leg kick. And rifles one right past Dozier for a strike. Oh, 
Gage really a veteran of the Pacific Coast League. He's been around the minor leagues for a while. He has had stops in the Pacific Coast League in Sacramento, in Las Vegas, Reno. He appeared in 2022 in a few games for the Blue Jays in their system in 2022. As you mentioned last year with the Astros, originally drafted by the Giants. Two balls and two strikes to Dozier. Ball is popped up. Right field coming on is a sprinting. Pa has he lost the ball. He drops in fair. And standing at second base is Dozier. Dozier's going to get a double out of that. Ball that Pajas could have caught. And really not that deep. You look at the second baseman is, but it has to go back. That's normally going to be a second baseman's call, but he heard the right fielder call him off. And for Pajas, he also learned something else. Once the ball's on the ground, don't go down with just the glove to pick it up. Why? Well, he dropped it again. Once you drop it, go down with both hands or the bare hand. Make sure you pick it up. Jake Marisnik, who was with the Dodgers last year, now at the plate. As an outfielder, you see that, that infielder coming back and the back of the infielders to you. From the outfield, that's telling me he's got it tracked pretty well. Marisnik fouls it off to the right. If as long as he's not backpedaling. And that's exactly what, what took place. But for Powers, as soon as, as soon as the outfielder calls the ball off, the infield is going to back away. So that's something that we'll talk about. Clayton McCullough working on the outfielders. They'll talk about, well, the communication, whose responsibility, and maybe how to pick up the baseball. Oresnik drills this one to the left field corner. That's going to be a fair ball and bounce to the wall. Goes around third will score. He's in. And into second with a run scoring double, Jake Marisnik. And the score now is three to one, Angels. They try to come in, did not get the ball into the hands quite enough in Marisnik. He just hand pushed it. A big lead at second. Gage delivers. And the batter is Cole Fontenelle. Uh, just a really a picture perfect swing. Hitting against the firm front side, the left leg. Really from that camera angle. Good shot. You can see how much that ball actually hooks with the spin because of the, the bat speed. Gage steps off, and Marisnik's going to be safe. Gage's throw was off the mark. Taylor had to do everything he could just to collect the baseball. Had that been a good throw, they had Marisnik as a dead duck at third. Yeah, well, uh, Taylor was late to the dance. He did not pick up the runner at third base. Everybody's yelling, there he goes, there he goes. But watch Taylor. You'll see at the bottom of the screen. Okay, plenty of time to get the ball there. But Taylor was not there in time. Did not really watch the runner to see that he did get, in fact, a head start. Runner at third. And nobody out. 0 and 2 after a swinging strike for Fontenelle. Infield playing halfway all the way around. Chance to cut down a run, perhaps. Gage kicks fire. And that's up high. So here's the bag. You see, Taylor comes in late. And the throw to the outfield side of the bag. And two pitch missing. Two balls and two strikes. So the third baseman, you better watch that that runner at second base and glance over just to see if he is going to be taking off early. Two ball, two strike offer from Gage. And it's a chopper back toward the middle. It'll be picked up by the shortstop Trey Sweeney. Throws on to first and got him by a step. But they traded out for a run there as Marisnik comes in to score in the 6-3 put out. It's now 
A four to one ball game. And the stolen base sets up the run. One of the the issues for Gage last year at the minor leagues, and then when he got the call at the big leagues too, was against right-handed batters. They hit 333. Lefties, they struggled. Barely hit at the Mendoza line. They hit 203 against him. Willie Calhoun, left-handed hitter, playing left field. He'll take a strike. By the way, Anthony Rendon not playing today, and for uh, Ron Washington, the skipper of the Angels, saying, "Look, there's a, a lower leg issue with Rendon, expecting to be in the lineup next week." Bouncing ball, foul past first. But getting back into the lineup, to take that theme song. Anthony Rendon has not been in the lineup a great number of games since he came over with that big contract. You know, he's played just 200 of the possible 546 games. Not a lot of games. They're dealing with injuries and whatnot. And now we'll see what Rendon does this year. So many games he plays, see if he can stay healthy. Calhoun waves and misses. He strikes out. Two gone now. Base is empty. Down three runs, four to one here in the bottom of the fifth. I mentioned Ron Washington. There's a guy that, I don't know if you remember this or not, you guys were teammates briefly, I think. Mm -hmm. 1977. Yes. He was called up to the Dodgers. He's always been considered one of the best infield guys out there. Well, he's a guy that has really analyzed. Um, how you field the ball, how you position yourself, how you pay attention to where you need to be against a particular hitter with a particular pitcher on the mound, by the way. But enthusiasm plus. Former Texas Rangers manager. He was coaching with the Braves most recently. He's been with the Oakland Athletics for a while. Ramon Soto with a 1 2 count. You know, Gage had gotten ahead on all the batters he's faced so far. He kicks and sends another one home. And this one lifted in the air to center field, waiting for it. Drew Avens. He'll make the catch, but two runs come in on two hits. Nobody left. And after five. At Tempe Diablo Stadium, it's the Angels four, Dodgers one. Twenty twenty four season ticket memberships are now on sale. All memberships include exclusive access to opening day. 
postseason tickets, exclusive member-only events, team store discounts, and so much more. Visit Dodgers.com slash membership. 4-1 Angels, top of the sixth inning, along with Rick Monday. I'm Tim Never, Kirsten Watson with us on the radio TV simulcast today. And there's old friend Adam Kalerik. Dodger fans, Oklahoma City fans, be familiar with Adam. Ground ball pitcher, and there's a ground ball to right field. Down the line, off the bat of Teoscar Hernandez. He'll round first and head to second with a leadoff stand-up double. Opportunities to go the opposite way. Don't have to pull the ball all the time. He popped out to second base his last time up. And the Dodgers again have a runner in score position. That's a tough pitch to hit, first of all, and especially to go the opposite way down and a little bit inside. And the Dodgers have had traffic on the bases all game, but they're one for eight with runners on base, and so far, 0 oh for five with runners in scoring position. Austin Barnes fouls one back for strike one. So Kalarik's got an interesting distinction. Not the it means a whole heck of a lot, but because of rules changes, he can't do this anymore. He was a first baseman in college, University of Maryland. He's the last Dodger pitcher to play first base for the Dodgers. And that happened right before the rules changes, where you have to have the three batter minimum. So you couldn't put him over at first base and then put him back on the mound. Started doing that in Tampa Bay. Kevin Cash, the manager of the Rays, did that with Kalerik when he was with the Rays. Did it a little more often there as Barnes looks at strike three. And Austin sits down. He's 0 for 3 today. Well, I, I think Austin Barnes might, you know, I say this tongue in cheek, he might want to get a rule book. The outside corner to Lance Barrett has been rather generous. And I think Austin Barnes may be thinking, hey, wait a minute, the plate's only 17 inches wide, but a couple of times he's been up there today, it's resembled maybe 23 inches wide. Left on left matchup, Kalerik the sidewinder facing Gavin Lux. And he drills in a strike. First pitch. Lux one for two. He scored a run today. Hernandez off second. Dodgers down three runs. Into the latter stages of the ball game. The pitch floated in for a strike. 0 and 2 to Lux. He's had a full day of running as well. Infield single and then next batter scored first to third and make that first to home. That's a good test. Have to run from first to home. Ball pops out of the glove of the catcher, Matt Theis. <laughs> Then when it went down to hit his foot rolled away from him. Looks like Thice will be the primary backup for the Angels this year as Logan O'Hoppy will get most of the at bats at the catcher position. Well, Thice has a good arm. He likes to throw to the bases trying to double up runners. Kalerik's pitch missed on the inside backing out was Lux. Gavin was saying the other day he's just happy to be outside playing baseball again. It's a long time when you have to rehab. It's a hot smash down to third, but right there to play it is Fontenelle. And he throws along to first to retire Lux. Two down. Well, he fought the ball off. He hit that ball hard. Nice play. Perfect uh, defensive alignment by Fontenelle. Also at third base. Inside out swing. Hit the ball hard and went the other way. Always looking for those positives in spring training. Andy Pajes, who doubled in a run in the fourth, one for two today. Pajes is hit. Calera came too far inside and got him. So now this will bring the tying run to the plate. Second Dodger hitter to be hit by a pitch this afternoon. The other was Chris Taylor in the first inning.
Well there's no good place to be hit but. That one doesn't hurt quite as much as other areas. Got it on the left hip just above the hip bone look like. Trey Sweeney is 0 for 2. Sweeper for a strike from Adam Collier. For Sweeney, good size shortstop, 6-4. Played in exactly 100 games last year in Somerset with the Yankees. Uh, and hit 252 there. Out of Eastern Illinois. A bonus baby, a first round pick. 2021. One ball and two strikes to Sweeney. Fan of that waits. And here's the pitch from Kaleric. Floats outside. Two balls, two strikes to Sweeney. We talk about the depth that's needed at you know, other parts of the organization. Sweeney. Looks like he'll be part of that. The Dodgers did a pretty good job, really good job of rebuilding that depth. This offseason, there's one in the center field, a base hit. Coming around third is Hernandez. Here comes the throw from center. It's way offline. An RBI base hit for Sweeney. It's four to two. And the Dodgers finally get a base hit with a runner in scoring position. So they're one for eight in that spot so far in this game. Both runs coming with two outs today. Highest stops at second. So now the tying run is aboard for Kevin Padlow. Well, that was an impressive at bat because you're down very quickly, 0 and 2. Count went to 1 and 2, and they had to get the base hit up the middle to knock in the run. Well, his leading at second base, Kaleric sends one home to the right handed hitting Padlow low. 1 and 0. Oh. Angel fans know Padlo, Marietta, California. Started in the Rockies system as a fifth rounder from Colorado in 2014, but he's been around. Strike call one and one. one of the Mariners, Giants in the big leagues. Rays as well. And in 2022, he had three games with Pittsburgh. Two on, two out. Kaleric deals. Adler lays off the pitch and a check swing. And a quick note with Sweeney getting that base hit. You know, in Kaleric's career, lefties have hit just a buck 84, make that 184. Right handers have hit 309 in his career. So he has been lights out against lefties, but, well, not against Sweeney. That's a good test, not just because it's a left on left, but for any left handed hitter. You got a lefty with a different kind of delivery, yes. too. Yes. You're able to handle. Well, that delivery, you want to, it's left handed batter. You want to say, hey, throw the ball right. You know, Sweeney in the minor leagues uh, last year in Somerset hit 161 against lefties. So that is a big time win today to get that hit off of Kaleric. And now Kaleric goes low to Padlow. And that will load the bases. That pushes the tying run into scoring position. The go-ahead runs aboard. Pajes over to third base. Sweeney to second. Padlow down to first. And here comes Austin Gothier who took over for Mookie Betts. So Gothier will come up for the first time. Seen some good things out of Austin already this year. Yeah, Barry Enright, the uh, the new pitching coach, comes out. He was really a, a backup, an understudy to uh, Brent Strom in Arizona. That was the last couple of years before coming over. Good guy to learn from. Mm -hmm. There's Gothier looking for a hit. He 
was part of the Dodgers batting around on Thursday against the Padres walked and scored a run on the sixth inning. He'll swing and foul tip it into the glove of Matt Theis for strike one. Drew Avens on deck. Here takes a strike. And it's 0 2. Well, one guy, Gothier, copied, I guess you could say, really watched closely when he was a kid. He, he was a big fan of Derek Jeter and as an infielder. And again, a good guy to emulate. Swings and fouls it off. But, uh, Austin says that was his favorite player of all time. Austin's not alone in that category. No, it's, it's a long list. Yeah. Now uh, well, the pitch from Kalerik. Fouled up to the right again. In fact, I have a friend of mine in uh, Vero Beach, Florida, that has a full size cutout of Derek Jeter in his office. Is that so? There's about a fan. Probably a Jeter fan there. It's a good bet. You got the whole New York connection there with the Mets and Yankees. They show up at the wrong park today. Wrong side of the country. Mm -hmm. Mets in Port St. Lucie, Florida. The Yankees on the other side of the state up in the Tampa. One and two to Gothia. Comes the pitch once more from Kalerik with the bases full, and Gothier fouls it off. You know, like many young players coming through the Dodgers system, you know, Gothier really benefited by going through Rancho Cucamonga. And every player, I think, does because they are under the tutelage of one of the one of the great coaches in the Dodgers system and manager John Shoemaker, who's back this year. Saw John the other day hitting ground balls. There's a bouncer toward the middle. It might sneak through. It doesn't. Backhanded by the second baseman. Gothier out at first. Oh, so close. Thought he had a chance. Soto with a great backhanded play to throw him out. You make the call here. Oh, man. Too bad we don't have replay. <laughs> Spring training. That's going to do it for the Dodgers in the sixth. They trail the Angels 4-2. Well, this 
play at first base. Again, we're not using replay today. If we did, looks like he's safe. Ball was not in the interior of the glove by the time he touched the bag. Tough time to get call to go the wrong way. Meant to run at least. And now, extend the inning. Yeah, would have extended the inning, but still 4 2 ball game. Angels in front. Now, Soren Lau, three levels of the minor leagues last year. Rancho Cucamonga, Great Lakes, and Tulsa. Right hander who also has played some other positions aside from pitching. Tasker Hernandez out of the game. Ryan Ward is in left. And Jose Ramos has replaced Pajes in right. This ball drilled to center. Avens backpedaling. Plenty of room. He'll make the catch for the out. Well, there's plenty of room in center to begin with. It's 420 feet away from home plate. And Matt Theis. With the fly out to center field. One down. Yeah, it's always been a big ballpark. There's 340 down the left field line. 360 down the right field line. You could build condos out in left center and right center. I mean, you talk about a big ballpark. A lot of room. Which is inside to Jordan Adams. Soren Lau throws one outside. Barahona in the Dominican Republic, 24 years old. And the strike is called on Adams. Some interesting news on a former Angel, former Dodger, too. Albert Pujols still works for the Angels. And the pitch missing. Blown in three and one. Albert is going to try his hand at managing this winter. And next winter season beginning after this major league season, he's going to go back home to the Dominican Republic and manage the uh, Escogido squad that he actually played for last year. So Albert's going to give that a shot. Three two pitch. And that misses ball four. Hunter Fiducia, the new catcher. Barnes is out of the ball again. Sure. One out and one on now for the Angels. Kyron Paris, the shortstop, in his first plate appearance after taking over for Zach Neto. A number of the guys in the ball game now for the Angels, you figure, are going to be in Salt Lake City. This summer, the AAA affiliate of the Angels. A strike called to Paris. Adams leads at first. And now ready to go. He kicks, fires, runner goes, and this ball is fouled off a long way out of play down the right side. Well, style of Ron Washington that comes over as the manager now of the Angels has always been aggressive to try and move the infield, get them out of position, move runners over. But it all depends upon, okay, who's the hitter? Is it someone you can rely upon to make this a pretty consistent contact? Ron saying that he's really been impressed with the atmosphere so far around spring camp. And this is their opener today, so they've been just working in the, any live at bats have been against each other so the first time they played somebody else and he said that he asked his team to all be leaders he wasn't looking for like a leader here a leader there he wanted everybody to act like a leader that's one of his messages to the angels Ron Washington one of the better known guys around the game good to see him get a chance to manage again It's always talking baseball. Okay, 
You know the other thing about a manager, Dave Roberts does this exceptionally well. Is to get to know your guys, not just as players. What makes them tick? I think back, that's one of the strong points that Tommy Lasorda had in his Hall of Fame career. But when you get inside the head, you know which buttons to push to encourage, you know which buttons to push to irritate, to challenge. I dare you to be better. Throw to first. Adams back. Adams certainly is a threat to run here. Let's see if the Angels want to try it. Two run ball game, bottom of the sixth. Angels leading four to two. And a pitch. Swing and a runner goes, and just too late at second base. But they do get the strikeout. And Paris strikes out, almost had to throw him out, but Adams swipes the bag, so two out and a runner at second. Yeah, good jump also. That was not a stolen base on uh, off of Fiducia or or really for that matter. Off of Lau either. That was just a, a very good jump at first base. Batter at the plate now is Jason Martin. 285 in Salt Lake last year. 32 home runs, 107 runs batted in. Those are big, big numbers for the Pacific Coast League. He's in the DH spot for Mickey Moniak, who left the game. And some of those towns, you get some altitude, but still, you've got a lot of experienced pitchers in that league. So always the easiest place to hit. This he got him out on his front foot. He struck him out. So the sixth inning comes to a conclusion. We head to the seventh. Dodgers still with some work to do. Trailing four to two. Here's what's coming up tomorrow. The Oakland Athletics come over to Camelback Ranch, take on the Dodgers. Then Monday, a really long road trip over to Scottsdale, take on the Rockies. That talking stick. And then Tuesday, White Sox at Camelback Ranch. Rangers Wednesday in surprise. Then Goodyear on Thursday, the 29th. That's right, February 29th, leap day. Cleveland Guardians on the first. And the Cubs after that. 
Travis McGregor is the new pitcher for the Angels. So a busy week. So the Dodgers have one day off from games the entire time down here. That's March 4th. Drew Avens leading things off. Good idea. Avins thought about bunting. Hear the voice of Dave Roberts in the background saying, "Good idea." Third baseman Fontanelle playing kind of behind the bag and off the line a little bit. Left-handed batter Avens fouls this one back. Four runs on seven hits for the Angels for the Dodgers. Two runs on six hits. Avens' first plate appearance this afternoon. And the pitch goes to the backstop. Well, McGregor getting the sign from Matt Thice. Evans waits. Here's the pitch. That's way up high. Travis McGregor. Our second round pick of Pittsburgh it's out of Tarpon Springs, Florida. And it was high as Triple A with the Pirates last year in Indianapolis. Spent part of the season in Double A Altoona, Pennsylvania. Fastball running up there around 97 or so. Also has a pretty good changeup with a slider. And Avins hits the ball the other way to left over near the line. Willie Calhoun settling under it, making the catch for the out. So one down on top of the seventh inning. Number 16, oh. Ryan Ward. Ryan Ward coming up. He's in the Chris Taylor's spot on the batting order. First pitch to Ward missing another left handed hitter. There used to be a thing uh, there still is a thing but used to be more regular years ago in spring training some managers might still do it. But they'll make what they call straight changes. Where if a shortstop comes out a shortstop goes into that spot in the batting order. But the Dodgers haven't done it that way what they do and a lot of other teams do it the same way it's just a matter of. Inserting somebody in the batting order depending on when that starter comes out. In this case, you got a left fielder going in for a third baseman. It doesn't have to be a straight change, but there used to be a lot more of those years ago, which was always welcome from the people keeping score. Embraced dearly. <laughs> you just have to adjust, that's all. McGregor's next offer to Ward is taken for a strike. Years ago, the late, great, and one of our good friends. Down in San Diego. 3 2 pitch, and Ward thought it missed, but it's called strike three by Lance Barrett. Jerry Coleman, and it was down in Tucson against then the Indians. And that's when the pitchers were also batting in the ninth spot. Cleveland made nine changes in one inning, and Coleman is doing the broadcast for the Padres. And none of the changes were straight up. They were mis mismatched, moved around, and Coleman just closed his scorebook in the fifth inning. He goes, no, nope, that's it. <laughs> and he called the players when they were announced. He goes, who knew? He knew then when who was uh, who was playing. But he said, that's it. He threw his hands up into the air. He goes, that's it. Closed the scorebook, and it was batter to batter after that. Hunter Fiducia the batter. Fiducia moving up the depth chart. The Pirates in the uh, Dodgers organization now. Right now look at him behind Austin Barnes it looks like. That doesn't surprise me with the Colonel though. I, no. I would guess that <laughs> he just lost patience with it. Pitch outside and now the count three and one to Hunter Fiducia. Well decorated marine pilot. Here's the wine by McGregor. 
His pitch cut on and missed. Full count, three and two. Coleman also American League Rookie of the Year when he came on as a player with in his major league career. And strike three called right at the knees. Kadusha out on strikes. One, two, three go the Dodgers. It is stretch time. Middle of the seventh. Four two Angels with the lead. Been taken out to the ball game today, middle of the seventh. Four runs, seven hits for the Angels, two runs, six hits for the Dodgers. And a great day at the ballpark on this Saturday afternoon. A lot of fans for the first time coming in this weekend, getting to enjoy some spring training baseball. Juan Mario come in last year, Great Lakes had 29 appearances, did not have a positive decision, went 0 and 2, 5.14 ERA. Pitch clock violation right away before he throws his first pitch. In 15 seconds with nobody yeah. on and 18 with a man on. Oh, he's mostly it's a, a batter violation. Pitch inside. Yeah, take too much time to get the home plate. Was it the batter? Yep. They, they thought they put a ball up on the board, didn't they? Yep. If it was a batter, it'd be a strike. Oh, it'd be a strike. Yeah. Correct. Maria's pitch swung on foul back. Yeah, pitch clock also for the, the hitters getting in. We talk about one player who'll be unnamed. Along with a few others that we don't really recall exactly who, but would wait in the on deck circle until their name was announced. And then they would come to home plate. So now with the clock ticking, there's a need to get into the home plate area as the clock continues to tick. Down to eight, seven, six, five. Ready to go. Here's the pitch. And it's fouled back to the screen. Right down to the very second. Seven. We're talking with former skipper Bobby Valentine is in the booth next door. We're talking before the game. He loves the pitch clock, as do we. Is inside for a ball and Hunter Dozier walks. Andy. Dozier's on base for the second time. He doubled his first time up in the fifth. Jake Marisnik up. He doubled last time too. Well, 
Now Rosnick with a foul ball at the plate. Stay on their line. Stay on their second, you hurt. Initially chat with Bobby about his time in Japan. He managed over there for six years, and I, I said, uh, "What challenges does uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto face with the differences? You pitch once a week in uh, Japan, where that will be in a five-man rotation here." He said, "Well, that might be a little adjustment." He said, "But there's something a lot of people never talk about." So what's that? He said, "The mounds over here, the landing spots where the pitchers come down in front." Are much harder. They're more compact and just pounded in than they are. They're much softer in in Japan. And the baseball is different. Has a slightly different feel and different seams. So it's more tackified. And this one in the air to right field, backing up on it and making the catch is Jose Ramos. Still don't know when we're going to see Yamamoto pitch in a Cactus League game. I would imagine sooner than later. Gotcha. Yeah, that'll be a highly anticipated day, that's for sure. Also a highly anticipated day that we are waiting for when we see uh, Shohei Otani in a Cactus League game. He oh. says that's coming soon too. Next week, which day? Stay tuned. So Maria from Maracaibo in Venezuela sends one home, and it's a ground ball to first. That is picked up by Joe and then thrown to second base. They get the force out there, but with Keystone cops on the bases right now. Ball being thrown around all over the place. Joe Vitrano in there at first base. Threw and got the first out, but the return throw didn't cooperate. No, a good job of getting the first throw off, making sure you're inside the line, did not hit the runner going back to the bag, but really to get a chance to set up and receive that throw that was low. And the Dodgers, uh, you know, coming in. Center fielder came all the way into the infield on top of it. So, you know, again, we see, you know, from a fundamental standpoint, everybody else kind of moving around. So the arrow will be charged on the first baseman, Joe Vitrano. <laughs> Calhoun follows this one back. Richie Martin is out there to pinch run at second base for the Angels. And Calhoun hits it in the air softly to shallow right center, going back and making the catch was Taylor Young at second base. Head to the eighth when we come back, still 4 2.
Late innings here in Tempe at Diablo Stadium with Rick Monday. I'm Tim Maverick. Kirsten Watson with us as well on the radio TV simulcast. Glad you're with us no matter where you happen to be tuned in. Whether it be radio or TV. New pitcher is on 23 year old Joel Hurtado out of Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic. Right hander had 10 starts last year in the minors. 22 overall appearances. So getting an opportunity to both start and relieve to find his, his way. Jose Ramos, the right fielder, will start things off at the plate for the Dodgers in the eighth inning. Down four to two. This is the third game of this Cactus League season. Third of 21 here in Arizona. And tomorrow, we get to see one of the really good young pitchers for the Dodgers throw against the uh, Athletics. It'll be Kyle Hurt getting the start. And then on Monday over in Scottsdale Ryan Yarborough will get the start. Those are the next two listed starting pitchers for the Dodgers. Daily updates. On who's doing what and when. Always a big thing in the mornings at spring training. Oh, Ramos clubs this one to left center. That ball's back, and that ball's gone. A home run for Ramos, and it's four to three. Oh, Zay with a rocket shot. And it comes with two strikes. On a one-two count. Boy, it's a hitter. If you get a pitch to be able to handle, especially when you're behind in the count, that's just a breaking ball that the only thing that it did was reverse course. Jose Ramos. First long ball here in the spring. We got a good chunk of that baseball. So now one run game in the eighth inning. And Travis Swaggerty up for the first time. Hitting in the DH spot. Well, Ramos, we've seen plenty of them in the first three games in right field. And now making a statement at the plate. There's the wind of the pitch by Hurtado. Outside corner, got him called strike three and Swaggerty out on strikes. Outside corner has been rather generous, both sides of the plate so far this afternoon. And I don't expect it to change. Outside corner has been like a plant today, continues to grow. Don't even have to water it. Alex Freeland, a switch hitter. Freeland came in to play shortstop last half inning. He's been in a couple of games already. Hurtado's pitch high and away. Well, Ramos getting uh, regaled in the dugout and he is reliving that pitch and the swing and everything about it. And why not? A lot to be happy about. Outside ball four, so Freeland draws the walk. Now the time runs aboard with one out. And these spring training games, especially early on, where so many players are coming in. I mean, the game changes quite a bit from a regular game because you've got so many different arms throwing, different bats up there. You get a lot of minor leaguers who are trying to make a statement to the club. That's why these games are interesting because they're, they're unlike a regular season game in that way, but it does allow for a ball club to put their 
prospects on display like Taylor Young. 246 last year in Great Lakes. A meeting on the mound right now for the Angels as Ramos is showing how he hit that ball. He's telling Petey Montero, the coach, look. I'm strong. And has to the left in on the conversation too. Right, Furtado ready to go. Freeland off of first base and Taylor Young at the plate. Pitch outside. Ends up this year. The Loons in Great Lakes last year. Fouls this pitch on. Two balls and a strike. Well, for me, it's fun to watch the young players come on because I understand um, what happens. You're under the magnifying glass. You've been uh, thinking and dreaming about, well, maybe playing in an A game. You watched enough spring training games as you're growing up and wondered, well, what would it be like? Which pops out of the glove of the catcher. Mejia now in the catch. Third catcher used by the Angels. And Freeland goes down to second base. Furtado working out of the stretch in a 3 1 pitch. And hits him. Oh, got him right in the back. He wasn't dreaming of that when he was thinking about it. I wonder what it's going to be like if I can get to uh, spring training, sign professionally, and go. Well, I say it's fun. I remember the first at bat that I had in spring training. Alvin Dark was the manager. He says, Get a bat. He said, You're not going to enjoy this at bat, but you will remember it. And I still do. Because I got jammed thoroughly. From a fellow by the name of Jim Bunning, Hall of Fame pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. Ironically enough, on a trip to Washington, D.C., I got a chance to sit down in his office, Senator Jim Bunning. And I said, as a rookie, I came on, and Alvin Dark told me to get a bat, and I would not really enjoy it, but I would remember it. And I said, and I was jammed thoroughly. And I said, Senator, I want to let you know that. Many many years later my left thumb still hurts. You were the pitcher. I popped out the shortstop. See what he did to you. I mean think about the number of at bats you've had whether they've been in exhibition games or not. You remember that one. That one stands out. I think about 7,000 major league trips to home plate. A pretty big one in Montreal. My thumb still day. hurts. Thumb still hurts. Somebody broke your hand didn't they. Mm. Uh, yep. For Hurtado, he's thrown now 10 pitches. Nine of them have missed the strike zone. The one that did hit the strike zone was hit off the ballpark. Joe Vertrano. There's action in the Angel pen, just as you say that, Rick. They may need a just in case guy. <laughs> now, this isn't even going to be a just in case. This is, hey, we're going to need you, it appears. That cough button works, doesn't it? Yeah. Even for, but you need to label yours as a sneeze button. Sneeze button. Works for both. Mm hmm. Pitch up high, ball four. Vitrano walks, bases full of Dodgers. Down a run here in the eighth. Well, that just in case guy is going to be just in the game guy. Toronto down at first, Young at second, Freeland at third, and here comes Ron Washington. 
And it's uh, time for the case. He's going to make a pitching change. Furtado is going to come out. And we will step aside as the Dodgers threaten in the top of the eighth down four to three. A new pitcher right hander is Michael Grill Hicks. Three levels of the minors last year. Low A, advanced A, double A. Primarily a starter. 18 starts out of the 28 total appearances. And racked up a bunch of strikeouts, and he's facing Gothier with the bases loaded in a 4 to 3 game in favor of the Angels. Swinging strike to Gothier. Each team with seven hits. Third base is Freeland. Second base is Young. Vetrano is at first. And Gothier watches it go past him to the backstop, and this one's tied. Mejia, the catcher, couldn't handle the pitch. It's a wild pitch. And the game is tied at four. Freeland comes in to score. Well, the wheels kind of falling off the buggy. The pitch in the dirt, but boy, there was no movement at all from from the feet. You know, you look at catchers that go down on one knee. Some become statues. They can't move laterally. He tried to backhand a ball out of way, and he backhanded that one and didn't move his feet either. No, there's the pass ball. I mean, you're reaching about a foot outside your right your right leg, and you haven't moved at all, and you know what's coming. You don't know it's going to be wild. Lined up on one knee with yeah. the bases loaded. And then backhanded the other one. Got there, and backhands that one. Yep. It's only been three spring training games, but we haven't talked about the catcher stance yet. Well, but that affected the play right there. Yes, it does. It decreases lateral movement. Now the infield is playing in very tightly. Two one pitch, three and one now to Gothier with Drew Avens on deck. That's ball four. Beg your pardon. That's the fourth one. And the bases are full of Dodgers again. So another chance for the Dodgers. Here's Avens with the bases full. Left handed batter and Avens takes a strike. And the right hander. Darrell Hicks. Four four Dodgers and Angels top of the eighth inning. Havens watches this one way inside mm. for a ball. Yeah to get out of the way of that one. Yes he did. The last four batters Mo, a walk a hit batsman a walk and another walk and a wild pitch mixed in there. Jose Ramos started it all off with a solo home run. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, one and two. And the Dodgers uh, 
efficient that first game runners in scoring position just one for nine today. One ball two strike offer. Tried to catch that outside corner didn't come into the back door stayed outside two and two and a good uh, take also by Evans you know that is so tempting you're down by two and it's a big spot in the ball game obviously here trying to take the lead. Stretch by the big angel right hander runners lead first second and third and a strike is called Oh, that came back over the inside corner and Evans goes down looking. <laughs> Two men are out. Now Ryan Ward struck out in his only plate appearance in the seventh inning. Chance to give the Dodgers the lead. Inside ball one, first pitch. Next pitch to Ward, low and in. Now you're ahead 2 0. Oh. This pitch has got to be right there. I mean, it's got to be right down Broadway. Ward looking for one pitch in one location. Well, he got it, but he fouled it back. Two and one. Dodgers will see the Angels again after they return from South Korea. Three games in the freeway series to a Dodger stadium. And in Anaheim, that was a big cut and a miss by Ward. Count is now two and two. Bases loaded, two men out, 4 4 game. Go ahead runs less than 90 feet away with the lead at third by Young. Taylor Young walking off the bag. Now the stretch. The 2 2 to Ward. Uh, it's fouled off. He just reached for it, poked it off the end of the bat. Ryan Ward trying to unlock this game. The uh, pitch. Fouled back over our heads off to our left and way out of play. Sellout crowd today. Angels Dodgers first meeting of the spring. This will be the seventh pitch of the at bat to Ryan Ward. He'll get an eighth. Chopped it into the first base dugout occupied by the Angels. A breaking ball there stays alive. Runners lead first second and third two ball two strike pitch to Ryan Ward outside three and two and it gets a little more interesting as the carousel will begin here runners will move with the pitch this will be the ninth pitch of the at bat and here it comes and Ward fouls it off to the left. Protecting the plate, just don't want to expand the strike zone here. A lot of breaking stuff since it's been two strikes. Four four game in the eighth, and the pitch swung on, hit deep to right field, down to the corner. That is going to be a fair ball. It's off the wall. Young scores. Vitrano scores. Gothier comes around to score. A full count pitch turns into a bases clearing double, and the Dodgers lead it seven to four as Ryan Ward clears him. What a terrific at bat. I mean, with two strikes, you foul off pitch after pitch after pitch, try to come in with a fastball. And for Ward saying, uh uh, it's not going to work. 
Hicks had missed with breaking balls. Ward kept fouling pitches off, and on the 3 2, delivers again. What a swing, and what a big, big hit. First time today, the Dodgers lead. And now Hunter Fiducia, the catcher, he will take outside ball one. Well, five of the seven runs the Dodgers have scored in the ball game have come with two outs. A uh, breaking ball in for a strike. Well, here in the inning, I mean, the home run, did he get the strike out, which looked like it was outside? There's been three walks, a hit batter, and a three run double. Stretch, look at second, another pitch, breaking ball, again, fouled back. This one into the seats off to our left. A 7 4 Dodger lead, two outs. Ryan Ward, the runner at second, and Fiducia, the ninth man to hit this inning. One ball, two strike pitch. Outside, pops out of the glove of Mejia, but not far enough for Ward to move up. And with two outs, you're already in scoring position. You're not going to take any gambles here. That's such a deep corner in right field in this ballpark. 360 feet down the line. That ball spun up there, but just outside. And that ball just hung in the air for a long time because of the deep corner. Ended up hitting the wall just to the left of the foul pole. And everybody who was on the run anyway on a 3-2 pitch just kept on going. 3-2 pitch here to Fiducia. He waves and strikes out. An off-speed pitch. But nine men come to the plate. Five of them score. And it all started with Jose Ramos' leadoff home run. 7-4 Dodgers. Ryan Ward with the big swing of the afternoon a bases clearing two out double makes it a seven to four Dodger lead going to the bottom of the eighth inning and Levon Soto is now at third base for the Angels takes a pitch from Lucas Weff Weff's first spring appearance 41 appearances between Rancho and Great Lakes last year. To Louisiana Monroe. And Lamont Soto 0 for 1. Soto lined out to center in the fifth inning. And he goes the opposite way to the left. That ball's slicing. And it's going to be caught by Ward. So Ward contributing on the defensive side, too. 
One down, bottom of the eighth. Francisco Mejia, the catcher, fouls the first pitch away. It's nothing in one. Lucas Webb really did a terrific job. Dodgers got him as an unsigned free agent. Born in Toronto. Things are really good for him in, in Rancho. He earned his promotion to Great Lakes. He was part of a pretty good pitching staff there in Rancho last year at the beginning of the season. This ball is yanked down the right side foul and out of play for a strike. Two balls, two strikes to Francisco Mejia. Pretty good size also with what? 6'5". A big tall drink of water he gets full extension also on those pitches. There's the line to kick the pitch. Popped up foul third base side not a play. So at Louisiana Monroe he pitched there for three years. Exclusively out of the bullpen. Logged 72 innings there. Uh, I shouldn't say exclusively out of bullpen. They get a couple of starts while he was there. But mostly out of the pen. And did not get drafted. But the Dodgers saw something in him. And he advanced rather quickly, relatively quickly. You always want to see him advance. If you're in low A ball, you want to be in high A by the end of the year. That should be a goal of yours as a player. Well, Rancho Cucamonga is rather impressive when you start to look at 22 games that he appeared in. He allowed just one ball to be hit out of the ballpark. Huh. Uh, pitch up high. That's a ball. So Mejia will go down to first base. Well, you keep it in the ballpark. You're going to be in yeah. good shape. And in 19 games before he was promoted to Rancho Cucamonga, he allowed just four. Home runs. This ball's hit hard to left field off the bat of Jordan Adams. It's going to roll past Ward and get to the wall. Rumbling around second, heading to third is Mejia. He'll be in, and it'll be Jordan Adams with a double. Second and third, one out for the Angels. And the tying run coming to the plate. Kyron Paris will be the hitter and Adams has been on base a couple of times. He also stole a bag walked his first time up. Here's Paris struck out swinging in the sixth. Well, Lucas Weff. W.E.P.F. There's a ground ball to short. Dodgers will just play for the out. And Freeland throws over to the Toronto at first base 6-3. With the runner Mejia scoring from third to make it a seven to five ball game. So we'll trade the run for the out there. Two down, runner at second. You were talking about some of Webb's numbers. Here's something I thought really, really stood out for him last year, especially in Rancho. The strikeout numbers are really good. Jason Martin is the batter. But in Rancho last year, he had 33 and a third innings pitch, Mo. 58 strikeouts. That's his first go at, at pro baseball at that point. He just came out of the bullpen and was cutting guys down left and right. That ball fouled off to the left and out of play for a strike. A 1 1 count. And low number of base hits also. I had a pitching coach that told me years and years ago he said, Look at the number of innings that the guy has. Obviously, you don't want a lot of walks in there, but how many hits? Well, to Kukamanga, he gave it 25 hits, so that's over 33 in the third innings. Well, 
Those are some of the indicators. Fewer hits than innings pitched. More strikeouts than innings pitched. And the strikeouts to walks. He had only eight walks and 58 strikeouts. Mm -hmm. At the low minor leagues, you normally don't see that kind of strikeouts to walk ratio. And the guys are just learning. This ball lifted in the air deep to center. After it is Avens. He is at the track. He looks up. And this ball is gone. And it is a two-run game-tying home run for Jason Martin. It is 7-7. Seven to seven. And we just talked about the fact that he did not give up many home runs. Only one hit out of the ballpark in 22 games when he got the call up to Rancho Cucamonga. And this is a, uh, well, this isn't a measuring stick home run in this ballpark. It's 420 to straightaway center. And he hit it to right center field. Is not any closer. The base is clear for Hunter Dozier. One run for Martin. And a brand new ball game. Well, neither one of these teams have really helped themselves for the Angels. They're two for 12 with runners in scoring position. Whoops pitch. Wave and a foul tip into the glove of Fiducia for strike three. But the damage done. Three runs come in on a two run shot by Jason Martin. We go to the ninth. It's the Dodgers nine, seven, Angels seven. Seven runs, nine hits for the Angels. For the Dodgers, seven runs, eight hits, and an error. And now we go to the ninth inning. Just one frame to go here. And Nick Jones, the left-hander, climbed the ladder last year. A tall lefty slings one in there for a strike on Jose Ramos, who homered his last time up to start the five-run eighth. Saw where Dave Roberts sent first base coach uh, Clayton McCullough over to deliver a message to uh, Angels manager Ron Washington between innings. The chances are this is only going to be a nine inning game. Typically they are. Well, how many players are left? Unofficially, Mr. Jones, who is on the mound, is the 53rd player in this game. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah. They had 60 the first game. <laughs> And the pitch is inside to Ramos. Three and one. You know, the spring training you used to see where they'd play maybe one, maybe two, depending on how much pitching they've got with them. 
And how many position players they have with him. Ramos takes a walk and the go-ahead runs on board. Nobody out. Travis Swaggerty coming up. But uh, I think a lot of times, especially the teams that have to come over from their complex, like the Dodgers here today, they only have a certain number of guys with them. Yeah. So. Well, the Angels have used eight pitchers. Dodgers have also used eight. Washington coming out. I mean, after one batter, he can't change him here. He's got to pitch the two more. Well, I, I think this is a uh, a listening session for Mr. Jones. Look, we're in spring training. This is the first game. We got a, a tie ball game. We need you to throw strikes. Uh, you don't have to be a a good lip reader to see what was said there. He said, just pound the strike zone. Wash communicated right there. What do you want it done? Well, Swaggerty trying to get into the offense. He looks to bunt and bunts it foul. Does he try and bunt again? Lefty against lefty. Not this time, but he took a strike and he's in the hole over well, two. There's that outside corner. To both sides. It's been consistent. Uh, Nick Jones delivering, and it's up high to Swaggerty. One ball and two strikes. Jones just 25 years old out of the state of Georgia went to Georgia Southern. He's big 6'6". Six, six. And he fires one by a swinging swaggerty for strike three. The well, Dodgers so far have gone in spurts. An eight run first inning on Thursday. They had a six run sixth inning. Yesterday and then a five run eighth inning today. Alex Freeland switch hitting shortstop batting right handed against the lefty Jones. He'll take strike one and pumped in there. The delivery of Jones it's not like Adam Kolarik where he drops down to the side it's kind of a I guess you'd call it a low three quarter slot right. So it gives you a little bit of a different angle. That's outside and it's one and one now. A lot of fastballs. Really when you look at his scouting stuff he hasn't shown up very high in terms of velocity on the gun swing and a miss for a strike one and two. But when you're six six and you're all arms and legs. And you got that different angle. That seems to create some issues for a hitter. One and two to Alex Freeland. Hits it in the air to shallow center. And that could be a little trouble, but nope, it is caught. As Martin, the second baseman, goes out there to make the play. Well, whatever it was that Ron Washington said to his pitcher, it seemed to work after walking the first man. It strikes out the second one after that visit to the mound. There goes one ball and two strikes to Freeland. Gets the second out of the inning. Message delivered. It appears message received. Well, Taylor Young at the plate was hit by a pitch last time up. Came around to score. That was in the eighth inning. He'll start his at bat off here, taking a strike. Nothing in one to Taylor Young. A pitch. Outside. One ball and one strike. One on and two out. The pitch from Jones. 
pounded inside for a ball two and one. We've been pretty lucky with the weather here so far this early in spring training. Last year we started a little later. And it was cold. Remember we had the word jackets the first several days probably the first week week and a half but it has been beautiful here so far. And a strike call so if you're thinking of making the journey over from L.A. or anywhere else we happen to be a Dodger fan. Looks like we're in for some good weather for the remainder of the spring training games. Two balls and two strikes. Taylor Young right handed hitter against the big tall lefty Nick Jones. Runner at first is Ramos. Here's the pitch. Swing on and hammered foul down the third base side. Young back in the batter's box and Jones delivers. That's low. It's a full count now. And that'll mean Ramos, who represents the go-ahead run of the ball game, will get a head start here. Taylor Glasnow started this one, went an inning in two thirds. Joined us for half an inning during the course of the game. There's ball four high. And now the go ahead run goes into scoring position. Joe Petrano will come up. I think we both thought it was a, a very good conversation that Kirsten had with Tyler Glasnow today. And he was honest about his performance today, he wasn't happy with it. But getting to listen to him talk pitching and what he's working on and those types of things. He's got a high pitching IQ, that's for sure. Trying to the first baseman will take a strike. So Glass now liked the uh, metrics as he was referring to. Said it was not a particularly great outing, but it's the first one. I mean, we'll have a couple more. No balls and two strikes to Joe Vitrano. Runners lead first and second. Swing and a miss, strike three. Vitrano strikes out. Nothing across for the Dodgers in the top of the ninth inning. Angels come to bat in the bottom of the ninth. 7-7 seven, seven is the score. Still hanging out on the hill of the outfield as this game's tied. Will the Angels get a run or will we finish this way? Seven to seven. We'll find out shortly. 
A new pitcher for the Dodgers. It is Franklin De La Paz. Franklin from Azua in the Dominican Republic, 24 years of age. Last year with Great Lakes, spent 2021 with the Great Lakes for part of the season, also with Rancho Cucamonga. De La Paz. Facing Jake Marisnik here in the bottom of the ninth inning. First pitch is high for a ball. So what's that player number what 54 54. Well, I'll make a prediction pretty safe one. You're going to go out on a limb again. Yeah I'll say by uh, mid March we won't have 54 players in the games anymore. <laughs> Two things. Maybe by March 3rd. Down in the 40s. That one is smacked into left field by Marisnik. And he's going to turn first and think better of going to second base. He took a big turnaround first and then slammed on the brakes. Yeah, he saw Ward come over and field that ball. Really, uh, Ward fielded is in pretty good position to throw. Made a strong two hop, almost a strike to second base. On the TV side, see Ward come over. Scores up the body to where his momentum is really coming towards the infield and gets a lot on the throw. That was a two hopper, but right on target. Oh, quick throw, and Dana Paz throws it away. And it goes out of play, so Marisnik will get second. And now the winning run is in scoring position. On E1. Errant pickoff throw. Not even close. Richie Martin. And the pitch by De La Paz. There's a ground ball to second. That'll move the winning run a station closer as Gothier throws on to first to get Martin. I was watching the uh, Angels first base dugout to the near side where the manager and the coaches are positioned with a protective screen in front of them. you know the first guy in the ballpark that was applauding on that ground ball to right side of the infield the manager Ron Washington knowing hey look move the runner over now the infield has to come in outfield has to come in it's a good piece of hitting and it's up to Willie Calhoun now Calhoun was uh, drafted by the Dodgers. But one out, winning runs at third. Left handed batter Calhoun against the lefty De La Paz. And this one's popped up to shallow right. Not going to be deep enough. Ramos gets underneath and he makes the catch. And throws it home on one hop and keeps Marisnik at third base. And there are now two men out. Yeah, one of the conversations is going to be with Ramos. Look, don't catch the ball and then look and see what the runner's going to do. Catch the ball, throw it, hit the cutoff man so the runner has no option to do anything. Right by the first baseman. Yeah. And by the way, Delapaz was not backing up home plate. He was not in position. So that's another conversation. Those are the little things that the notes that the coaches and managers will take. Levon Soto swings and pops it up back of the plate. And that'll make the seats. Nick getting a good size lead. Gothier at third, well off the bag. So Marisnik get it several feet down. Oh, spun in there a little low for a ball. And two out, bottom of the ninth. 7-7 seven, seven is the score. Franklin De La Paz sends home a strike. And the count on Levon Soto is a ball and two strikes. De La Paz set. Lefty stretches. Fires. This ball's hit in the air to right field. It'll be playable for Ramos. And he'll make the catch to record the third out in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Dave Roberts says that's enough for today. 
And the Dodgers and Angels will tie at seven runs apiece. So the Dodgers go to 2 0 oh, 1. The Angels 0 oh, 0 oh, 1. As we've got a 7 7 final score here this afternoon. Well, Dodgers and Angels, first time they meet. This is the score. They'll meet three more times in the exhibition season. Tomorrow on Sportsnet LA and AM 570, Dodgers and A's at noon. Radio pregame begins at 11.30. Well, Rick Monday and Kirsten Watson, I'm Tim Neverett. Hope you had a great Saturday afternoon. We'll talk to you again tomorrow from Camelback Ranch.